Hey everybody. Oh, there I am. Hey everybody. Austin here. Just want to do a quick little recap going over my Jivo trade today. My long trade on Jivo. Yeah, how's that one? Um, I don't know how many people can say that they made money long in Jivo today. Uh, I mean, look at this great opportunity. I mean, it's just plentiful. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, made money on Jivo. Not, I guess, extremely proud because I feel like I should have shorted it, you know, looking at this chart. But uh, I've just been having such a hard time pulling the short trigger lately that I've just been having so much fun with these longs that I've almost forgotten how to short, which is really funny because three years ago, you know, like my first few years of trading, it just 99% short and all, you know, all of a sudden, like night and day, just longs just became more fun. So anyway, um, let's go over it. So kind of like INPX, there was a moment in this trade where I kind of like, I, I got a little nervous and so I, I sold half again and got back in, we'll go over that. But just to give you the context of my morning, uh, I, wo I woke up here and I saw I saw um, Jivo here, like right around here, at around eight o'clock and I, I the f when I first sat down is when this dip was happening and I almost bought that dip just because I was like, hey look, good opportunity right as I sit down. Uh, probably a good thing I didn't because I didn't even know what the news was. Like my Thinkorswim hadn't even loaded yet. Uh, I use Thinkorswim for news, uh, and I probably would have probably would have ditched it here. Like after after it didn't work here. But anyway, like right here is where I you know where I would have ditched it. Like that's where I started paying attention. Like I thought it was going to roll over here. I actually even located it right when I woke up. I was like, Jivo's up. I'm like no shit, Jivo the perennial the perennial shit bag. <laughs> that suck. Are there shares? You know. So I actually locate it, which makes it even more disgraceful that <laughs> I didn't short it. But like three years ago, this was my bread and butter, and I just didn't didn't take it today. But anyway, so I started paying attention right here, and this is where I thought it was going to roll over. And um, especially after this perk, I was like, you know, like I, I figured like after this perk, like if I were going to buy it, I was going to buy it like over this perk. If, if it was going to happen, but once we got here, I was, you know, I was almost certain that it wasn't going to give me the opportunity, and I didn't want to, like, I didn't want to short down here, like, I've gotten in too much trouble trying to short, trying to short uh, weakness before cracks, and, like, this would have been the more important crack for me, and so, you know, like, when we kind of recovered and reclaimed this VWAP, I was paying close attention, and, you know, in hindsight, it was a little premature, like, this was the only this is kind of only like the first attempt to break down and I normally like to see it prove to me a couple times that it can't break down but this was pre-market and things can happen fast pre-market and I'm, I'm sure that was playing a little bit of a role so you know I get it I, I got in here over this 410 break and there's a reason why like you'll notice a theme in my trading uh, I don't like to buy high at day breaks just it's just not myself for me it's it's kind of too stuffy for my liking a lot of the times I just don't like to do it there was zero chance of me ever ever buying um, a 430 break here the pre-market I was just not gonna do it like unless unless I you know I had a solid average from earlier and I was adding to a position that might and you know it was a setup that I really really liked that's a potential of when I might do that but I, I will rarely rarely ever start a position on a high of day break uh, and, you know like the, with the notable exceptions if it's like grinding all mid morning or midday and it forms like a nice nice long U and it's been grinding with consolidation like and it gives a nice U or cup and handle near the end of the day or the end of the morning that you know I might I might try that one but like just something like pre-market or out of the open I don't typically like to do it so what I like to do instead is I like to pick I like to identify these inflection points where I feel like if this breaks, it can potentially lead, kind of as a domino effect, it can lead us up to the high of day break where I can sit through the high of day break now with a long position from with a cushioned average from lower. Uh, so that way I have a little bit less risk on the trade and uh, I don't feel like I'm potentially buying the top. So for me, this 410 was the first potential inflection point and we only had one kind of failure to break down. So this is probably why I was a little bit early and probably why I was kind of like, oh no, look, it is gonna break down. So I ditched half here and with the full intention that if it recovered that I was gonna pull an INPX on it, you know, I was gonna get right back in and potentially even double. Um, 
I, I got right back in and I didn't exactly double, but I put on another thousand or two shares here. Um, just because it wasn't like a doubling spot. Like this for me would have been the doubling spot over four trend, but it was too close to high a day for me. So I just put a little bit more on because um, I had a solid risk here. I knew that now under 395 or 394, I knew I was done. So again, kind of just like the INPX trade. Once I knew exactly where I, I, I didn't want to be in long, that's when I was comfortable going a little bit bigger. So, that, you know, hindsight this is a little bit premature, but, you know, like pre-market, things can happen super fast, and that was probably on my mind, too. Um, but anyway, so got in, uh, we got the nice push, and and I like I, I think I, I, I sold like a third right here, and I sold a third right here uh, on the 30, 35, like right right near 40 break, and, I, you know, thinking that it was Jivo and 450 was right here. I sold a little bit more in the 40s. I got my trade portion off, so I got my scalp portion off, and I got my trade portion off right there in the 40s and 50s. And with something like Jivo, I was only willing to leave. I, I you know, I wanted to get most of my size off the table immediately because I know just, you know, how much of a dirt bag this company is. Like I shorted it a million times, and I knew like I knew I didn't want to sit with a position at least at you know, especially a a big or most of my position without having taken something off um, going into the open on a name like Jivo. So I, you know, I had a third left of my position and my average was about 409 at the, at this time, my average was 409. And I was like, if this ever gets back to 409, I'm out. And I was also going to get out if it was close to my average at the open. So, you know, when it was trading here at 430, I was giving it the chance to get that last like push, maybe pre-market. And it, when it tanked, I just got out right before the open. That was my last third. I took it off for break even. So I only got two thirds of the profit on this trade. But you know that happens sometimes. And you know I, I often get into the the pattern of trying to make you know every long a home run. And that's why I kind of developed this system because I'm you know you would get super frustrated when when one goes like MBOT or you know MRIN or NBEV like you know th those ones that go nuts like. Every time you enter a long trade, that's the ones you want. And you know, I have a bad habit. Of, I had a bad habit of taking them all too early, and then I had a bad habit of you know, like overstaying on all of them. So that's kind of why I created this this three tiered system where I take off a third for a scalp, a third for a trade, and I would leave the the rest of the third for what I considered to be the home run. So if 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 a long I was ever in wanted to pull an MBOT or an MRIN, I had some, you know. And home runs, I, I, as I discussed in previous videos, can be different. You know, they can be different. I can get out at different exit strategies. It's kind of like my play. My my last third is my play third. But anyway, that was the you know quick and short and simple trade on Jivo, and then we just kind of tanked all day. And there is something to note here. So in previous videos, I told you about volume consolidation. I don't count this as consolidation at all. This is just. This is just being Jivo. This is just being a turd. This is just tanking, tanking, tanking. It looks so beautiful. My, you know, my two year ago self is punching me in the face right now. But this is so beautiful downtrend. We don't really start to find a bottom in consolidation until right around here. And we consolidate all day. And I got questions. You know, is Jivo like? Are you are you done with Jivo? Like, are you going to? Are you gonna? Is there another trade on it? I'm like, you know, I'm never gonna turn down the opportunity but like after it tanks this much like I don't I don't have any high hopes at all for getting a second trade on it but you know of course I'm open if it wants to do a reversal then sure that's kind of how AXSM was you know like it tanked so hard in the morning but once it found some consolidation and it consolidated on high volume and it started to look like a reversal I was open to getting in so like once we start I, I paid attention like a little bit here in the middle of the day and I didn't like what I saw so I just kind of ignored it but You'll notice here in the middle of the day, once we finally got to this area where it finally started to go sideways a little bit, look at the volume. I mean, it's the volume's like nothing. Like, I guess the the, the average or the mode is like, what, 15,000 shares in the middle of the day. Like, that's well off the highs, well off view up. This, it, this, isn't, this isn't going anywhere. Taking into consideration this Jivo. This is, this is why I didn't even consider this, you know? So this is a good not trade, you know, like even if this made an inflection point for me, like to get back up to VWAP and then potentially higher with this kind of volume, it's, you know, it's not steady. It's not steady. Like there's a spurt here and a spurt. Here. Like there's no, 
there's no steady steadiness like over here but like I said this doesn't count it's tanking like if there was some steadiness and it was like close to a hundred thousand up here like that's different you know Jivo like this kind of just proves when there's no volume there's no life there's no life there's no upward movement so so you know in other words it's an amazing short <laughs> So anyway, uh, again, if you guys have any questions, uh, that was my Jivo trade today. Um, that was all I really did today. Um, I was grateful for what I got on it. Um, maybe, maybe next week I'll be able to hit my short buttons again. They're getting kind of dusty. Anyways, um, good luck on your trading. Have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, peace.